This is the S1S Podcast, episode 13. Stage one startup podcast is launching in T-minus five seconds. Three, two, one, zero. Prepare for liftoff. Welcome to the Stage One Startup Podcast for startups and aspiring entrepreneurs to find out what it takes to launch any business idea from Stage One to success. Now, for your hosts, live from the UK, Nichols and Morley. Hello and welcome to the Stage One Startup Podcast once again. And as always, you are tuned in with your hosts, Greg Nichols and Brad Morley. Brad, I think our listeners know which question I'm about to ask you right now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you right now? Do you reckon there's anyone else on the other end of this this speaker right now just thinking, fuck's sake, are you, how long are you going to do this for, guys? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm how really long sick. we're going to be able to run this Sorry. one for, to be fair. It's kind of running a little bit slim. We're going to have to think of something else. And be like, I'm at 2 today, Greg. <laughs> Don't <laughs> feel that great. <laughs> I've actually uh, been in bed for the majority of the day. <laughs> yeah. Not really looking forward to this one. But okay, well, to fi- to give you your answer, I'm at 15 today. I'm feeling pretty pumped. Solid. I'm energetic. Mm-hmm. I'm far from tired, and I've got my summer fruits. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to pass you over to Brad, who's going to give an intro for today's guest. Brad, over to you, my friend. Guys, so today's episode, we have got some serious, serious value to drop. We have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Zach Benson, who is an award-winning entrepreneur, dancer, hustler, world traveller and connector. Zach has combined his passion for dancing with his love for travelling, and he now teaches his skills to people all around the globe within his dance clinics. We've been following Zach for some time now, haven't we, Greg? We sure have, my friend. For about six months, um, and every time he updates his Facebook status, he's somewhere different around the world, spreading his passion to an audience, and all these people love him and love the journey that he's on. He's been on Fox TV's popular show, So You Think You Can Dance. I love that. I love that show. It's a great show. It just makes me realise that I'm a terrible dancer. <laughs> You're like a channel of friends. <laughs> <laughs> and most recently, he's been working with Quest Crew on LMFAO's new music video, Popping Bottles. But amongst his skills and passion for dancing, Zach is also the co-founder of Assistagram, which is an Instagram management company that specialises in helping people with their brand on social media who just do not know where to begin with it all. So we're going to be diving into a bit of that in this show. I'm not going to go too much into detail about this because I don't want to steal Zach's limelight too much and it will always come better from, from the man himself. We actually had the pleasure of speaking with Zach a few weeks ago on a Skype call just to chat, to uh, to get to know each other because we knew him within our Facebook community, but we never actually got around to, to speaking with him. Mm-hmm. But since speaking with him and listening to his amazing story and all of the successes that he has achieved in his life, we just thought he has got to come on the show. We literally looked at each other whilst we was on the Skype call with Zach and uh, we was like, he is perfect for the show. We knew our listeners would love him. I was ready to pack my bags and just go travelling <laughs> and teach dancing to and, te- and teach my terrible two step to uh, <laughs> to all of his students. <laughs> Don't knock that two step. Dad dance. It's powerful. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the show now and we're going to bring out the guest himself, Mr. Zach Benson. Thank you for coming on the show, buddy. Buzzing to get this interview started. Can you just follow on from that intro and give us a little bit more about yourself and what your story is so our listeners can join the wave? Yeah, hey guys, thanks for having me. Um, You know, to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I was actually born in South Korea and then adopted, grew up in Iowa in the U.S., Um, you know, went to an all, you know, just American school. Um, the crazy thing is, is like, I never thought I'd be doing something like this, like a podcast, a cast like this would <laughs> have absolutely scared me because <laughs> when I was like five, I was diagnosed with a speech impediment and couldn't say the letter R. So I went throughout high school and half of college without saying any word that had the letter R in it. And now I'm here doing a podcast. So it's mind blowing. Uh, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> Yeah. How but, did how did you cope with that? Uh, you know, I in college I went to this leadership conference and we had the like we wrote each other notes of encouragement. And one girl said she was like, you know, 
um, don't be afraid of voicing your opinion. Like what you have to say matters and people need to hear your voice. So don't be afraid. Just, just say something, you know, say what's in your inside. And to me, that was a life changing thing. You know, it's like, okay, these people can't even tell like that I have a speech impediment. So just stop trying too hard and speak normally. <laughs> That's so true, so, bro. Look at you now. You're killing it. Yeah. So struggled with that um, for most of my life. So I always thought if I could say the letter R, I could reach my potential. You know, throughout high school, I was introduced into break dancing because there's a couple of Asian kids at my high school that were super sweet dancers. And, you know, being from Korea and being in an all white school, um, I was like, okay. I want to I want to live up to my Asianness. So I, like, I want to be cool like these guys. And then uh, yeah, my friend gave me a DVD and was like, "Hey, dude, let's let's learn this stuff. It looks cool. You know, we can. I don't know. Um, so we learned it, and I I met some other guys that did break dance, and I went to college and met some other guys, and we did competitions, battles. I studied in Spain for a semester met this amazing dance crew. Uh, it's one of the best crews in the world. We practiced every day, so they taught me the meaning of hard work. Uh, I lived in Mexico. Went, yeah, just pretty much traveled the world, you know, um, as a dancer. So it's, it's pretty crazy. That is crazy. Um, that is, that's literally the life so many people want to lead. And, you know, you've had the, had the amazing opportunity to go for it, follow your dream, follow your passion, and then, you know, tell us where you are at now with it all. Yeah, so um, now, you know, I've traveled to more more countries than I can count. Um, I've made dance into a full-time career. I have a couple other businesses as well. I have a, a Instagram management company called assistagram.co. I have another company called Each One Reach One. Um, that's basically helping people do um, like a new era of lead generation. Um, you know, I'm still teaching and traveling every weekend. Uh, next week I'll be in Florida, LA, Texas. Next month I'll be in, um, Mexico. Spring I'll be in Europe. So yeah, man, just all over the place, but just doing what I love. Brad, we need to follow Zach around. I, I can't, I can't wait to, to look at those pictures on Facebook whilst I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> uh, in, in gloomy UK. <laughs> Looking at a laptop. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come out and visit you guys. Do we'll it meet up for sure. Yes, I'll see definitely. You soon, case. So, uh, Zach, that's that's perfect. I mean, you know, I'm hoping that it's, it's got to be a lot of people that are going to take some inspiration from the fact that, you know, you were one of those guys that had a problem when you was growing up, and you overcome that. Um, and now you wouldn't even know it's, we didn't even know until you said it. And obviously now you, you've actually taught yourself to get things right. And you've kind of used it as a leverage to go after what you truly believe in, which is what we're going to get out of you in this show with some awesome questions we've got lined up, including from, um, some people, some of our good friends that are actually in dance. So he's fired a, uh, across some questions for us and we're ready to get started. So I think Greg's going to take us into the questions and we're going to, uh, we're going to get started. Are you ready for the first round of questions, Zach? Yep. Yep. Ready. Brilliant. So for anybody that is new to listening to the Stage on Startup podcast, the first part of the questions that we like to ask our guests are about the hustle and what it took for the guests to get to where they are today. Now, obviously, today's guest is, you know, so unique in what he does. There's so many people that I know on a day to day basis that that would say there's no such thing. You can't you can't create a career out of traveling the world and teaching so many people to dance you know it's, it's physically impossible so basically zach has gone out and done the impossible so these questions are going to be how about how zach has managed to achieve that so brad do you want to hit us off with the first question my friend yep let's do this so zach what made you get into dancing and could you tell it is it something you've always done or tell us a bit about that yeah, so I, I started when I was 15, and uh, my friend who just introduced me, gave me a DVD, and was like, hey, dude, like, let's do this. It looks cool. Um, so it was just like a funny kind of thing I did in high school. Um, you know, made a crew, and then really pursued it hard when I was in live when I was living in Spain, studying abroad for a semester. Um, that world-famous crew just taught me the meaning of hard work. I mean, we were practicing and training on the streets every single day, four to six hours a day. Yeah, I really learned from them like what it takes um, to take things to the next level. It's just hard work and never giving up. I mean, so 
has there been any moment within you know your career in dancing entrepreneurship and you know just being a connector and an all-round entrepreneur has there ever been a moment where you kind of thought you know what this isn't for me I'm going to try and go into uh into you know just a standard job did you ever go down that route or have you always been a dancer and entrepreneur yeah definitely um so I went through college thinking I was going to be a personal trainer. After graduating college, I went and actually did some, like, uh, a year of service, volunteer service, um, with this organization called World Relief. And at that time, I was just helping refugees find jobs and homes. Like, I wanted to learn, like, what it's like to serve, what it's like to live on less so that others could have more, and just to see people as people. So it taught me a lot about life. But that was the year that... I gave up my dance. I, I gave up dancing. I was just like, you know, this is not fun anymore. I don't, it's, I don't, I didn't have the passion. So I gave it up for that year while I was serving people. And, um, I don't know. Um, I, I took about like eight to nine months off and, um, anyways, long story short, I met a couple other guys that really inspired me to start training again. And I got the passion back. I, I, I um I started competing more, doing battles, doing competitions, doing more shows. Um, started teaching at the community center, teaching kids from all over the world, like countries like Africa, Cuba, um, everywhere. And I could see like the smiles on those kids' faces, and that's what gave me the energy and passion back. It's perfect, and I think you know that it gets to the point where, like you said, uh, when we was when we had the the Skype call you know, a couple of weeks back when you were saying you got so, you, you started working so hard into dancing that that was what sort of lost the passion for you, wasn't it? That it wasn't no longer, you know, the the, the fun hobby thing that you was interested in doing, but you made it something you was doing frequently throughout the whole day and, and, and you just lost the interest. It, it was no longer enjoyable. Is that right? I'm saying that. Exactly. And to answer the question, like, um, okay, when I moved back and after I um, did that, I found, went to Korea, found my birth mom, because I was like, okay, I got to do that. And then after Korea, I moved back to Iowa and, you know, I was like, okay, I got to use my college major. My parents paid all this money for me to go to college. I'm not doing anything with my major. So I became a personal trainer. I loved it. I struggled in the beginning. You know, it was just all about money and trying to like, you know, get clients and stuff. But I had it all wrong. My mindset was wrong. I, I, and I talked to one of, my, one of my mentors, and he's like, dude, like, what you need to be doing is, like, serving people, offering an amazing experience, offering the awesome cust- customer service, and adding tons of value to your clients, you know? And I was just all about money. So, you know, when you focus on people, the money comes. And anyways, well, like, I was successful finally at personal training, and, and I was dancing and, and traveling and teaching too but there came to a point where the the gym got really mad at me like because i was traveling and leaving and taking so much time off so they said hey if you keep doing this we're gonna fire you and i was like yeah whatever dude like (laughs) you know i'm making you all this money i don't think that'll happen but uh, i got called into the office next week and he's like sorry man i gotta let you go how did that feel like whoa it hit me hard. Mm. It hit me hard because I was like, I had no idea it was coming. It was a shock. And, uh, I was feeling sad. Um, and I went home and I told my parents and they were sad too. They were like, go get another job. Like go get a, go get a new gym job. Mm. And I did, but I didn't like it at all. And I wasn't happy. And would you say that at that moment, that was the, that was the point in your life where you said to yourself, do you know what? You know, dancing is something that you've got to do. It's something that you know you can teach. It's something that you know you can bring smiles to people's faces. And I'm just going to go and do it. Is that the moment? That was the turning point for me when I took a leap of faith and I never looked back. I was like, I want to teach dance to people all over the world. I want to travel. I want to do what I love. And I'm going to continue to do what I love for the rest of my life. And you know, I, my parents didn't support me. My friends didn't. Everybody thought I was crazy. But 
I just went for it, man, and I made tons of mistakes. I failed tons of times, but I never gave up. I just kept pushing forward and kept learning and, and growing each and every day. Mm-hmm. It's a great message to anyone. You know, we always say that, you know, we've been through failures. People go through failures. It's a part of the journey. you just got to learn to embrace it and just push forward and keep going. And right around the corner, the light at the end of the tunnel, which actually falls nicely into the next question, what you, you were just talking about, Zach, because... What we want to know is, you know, I'm going to call him out, Brad Muggleton, if you're listening, um, which I hope you are, you you are so into the dancing game. And he's been a good friend of ours since, you know, school. We've yeah. known this guy since uh, since we were very young. He taught me how to break dance, believe it or not. He, he loves it. You know, he's really good. He's got his own crew. He's got everything. But he's local. And I know he will appreciate finding out how exactly... Zach, you are combining the two of your passions, the whole traveling. How, you know, you're a huge traveler. You're a big dancer. How are you combining those two to create a viable business? Guys, there's millions and millions, like thousands of dancers better than me, okay? I'm, I'm nothing special. All, all I am is um, I, simply, I, I simply have something that I love, and I want to do it more. And that's the passion that keeps me going, like, I love dancing, I love battling, I love performing, but honestly, teaching is my passion. So that's my niche. Um, and, you know, how I combine the two is like, you know, they, they, they go together. Like, okay, let's say I want to go to Bangkok, Thailand, right? So I go, I used to go on Google, I typed in Bangkok, Thailand, and I, all these studios popped up. I went to each website, got their email, got their phone number, and then sent them an email, right? Sent them a message saying like, hey, you know, I'd love to teach a workshop at your studio. Here's my website. Here, here are my videos. Um, you know, I'd love to set up a call. You know, and I sent tons of emails out, right? Obviously, the, what I say is really important. Um, and I've mastered that. I've mastered the art of cold market outreach. Um, but it's all about building a brand, so if you have awesome brands and you have awesome fans, I mean, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So just to get that straight, so what you do is before you fancy going somewhere, you will physically go on Google, type in the destination you're going, and I don't know, keyword dance studio or something, and all these places pop up. You cold email, call them, get in contact with them, and you know some of them come back, I'm guessing, some of them don't come back. Where does it go from there with the whole, you know, getting you actually over there how do you know what you're sort of walking into how much money you're going to make or is it just literally you just you just go and and hope for the best yeah it's a numbers game everything is a numbers game i mean some people will be into it some people won't you know so what who cares move on to the next um there's there's over twenty six thousand dance studios in the u.s the market is huge it's crazy so yeah i mean the ones that did respond like i'd hop on a call with them we work out a deal, mutually beneficial deal, and then I'd go and teach. So, yeah, <laughs> Zach, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> just make it sound like this is just like, you know, yeah, I just, you know, this is me. just put out a few emails, just tell people who I am, and yeah, they just instantly love me. <laughs> Confidence of the marketing skills, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's so easy. But people make it so complicated. Just keep it simple. Keep it to the point mm-hmm. and offer tons of value, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, we can, uh, yeah, we can certainly relate to that. But again, you know, this leads on to our next question quite nicely, to be fair. And obviously, you have had the pleasure of teaching people from all around the world in many destinations, more than probably I can even come up with off the top of my head right now. But other than that. You've also been a round four finalist on Fox's TV show, So You Think You Can Dance, which I believe is here in the UK at the minute. It is, yeah. It is, yeah. It's one one of them ones that my girlfriend sits there and watches, and I'm just like, I'll never be able to do that. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you've had the opportunity to, you know, to get through to round four finalists um, on that show. You've also had the opportunity to work with Quest Crew on LMFA, LMFAO's music video Popping Bottles. You know, can you talk us through what it took to have such an amazing opportunity like that? How did it feel to know that you're 
doing what you love on a day to day basis and having those opportunities just just there for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, some people are just born with like crazy talent, and I mean, if they work hard enough and make good connections, they they can make it. You know, um, other people they just have to, you know, it's, they're not born with it, and they have to go out and create opportunities for themselves. You know, I had to do that. <laughs> Right, right. So I auditioned for So You Think You Can Dance three times. Each season I made it, you know, further in, in the competition. Mm-hmm. Met so many amazing people. But I remember, like, the the producer, like, you know, Nigel Lisko. He was like, you know, it doesn't end here. Like, go out and make a name for yourself. You know, and I really took his advice to heart. I was like, okay, I'm not going to put all of my eggs in this, this basket, you know. It, there's a life beyond So You Think You Can Dance. It's a mm-hmm. platform. It's a stepping stone. And I just carried that attitude into everything that, um, you know, I, I wanted to do. So I just kept on networking and talking to people, uh, auditioning, you know, doing uh, interviews, teaching anybody and everybody for free. Um, yeah, I just did, like, I had that whatever it took attitude to do that. And, like, mm-hmm. even when I worked with all of these, um, you know, famous groups and crews, like, like I didn't expect anything in return. Like I, I just went in there. I, I danced, you know, like crazy, and just befriended them. And it, it was just, it's all about connections. So yeah, if you're able to like get people to trust you, make them, if you can make them feel comfortable, love you, um, you know, you can pretty much have the world. No, I think that's perfect. Will you? Just a quick question. Will you go back to, um, so you think you can dance? Will you try again if it comes back to the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, it's all over the world. It's it in is. China, it's in Australia, it's in Canada. You're going to go to all of them, aren't you? That's what you're going to do. <laughs> it's in Vietnam, it's in India. <laughs> it's first season in India was just this past, yeah, past month. So it's really taken off. It's a dance it's a dance program that's going to be around for a while. I'm kind of, I'm done with that. I've moved on to some other things. You know, I still think it's an awesome show and I support it, you know, hundred percent. Brilliant. It was a great, it was a great platform for you to, to leverage off of, you know, so I see so many people on these talent shows that get so disheartened when they get, you know, when they don't get through. And I think, I feel like shaking them and saying, look, you've got a talent, realize that this isn't, you know, the only option there for you. If anything, this is a sign that perhaps this isn't meant for you. You're meant for better things. And you are a prime example of that, Zach. Like you earlier, you know, you said earlier in the show, you you know, like in your head, you know, we think you're an amazing, amazing dancer, but in your head, you, you know, you, you analyze it and you think there's so many other guys out there that are a lot better than me at this, but that's not going to stop me from creating you know, my dream business and you, you literally have your, I mean, your, I won't go into the, the depth of your, in terms of revenue and that, but you're, you're killing it just to say, just to say it. Yeah. And like when I teach classes, when I do workshops, I mean, I tell these studios, like, listen, like I'm going to help your kids. I'm going to, I'm going to improve their performance. They're going to be better dancers. They're going to win competitions, but they're also going to have better attitudes. Like once, once I'm done with them, they're going to be more positive, more confident. Mm-hmm. They're going to take more classes and it, you, you start with one, right? So if I can change and touch one person's life in that class, and then they take that attitude and that energy that I get, that they get from my class, like they're going to make their whole team better. Definitely. And you, you know, you're proving it. The attitude is a big thing. It is a big thing, especially in that. I mean, for instance, there's so many people that are probably really good at dancing, but they might not have the thought of actually turn like having the business mindset that you've got, which adds to it. And I think that's so much value that our listeners can can get from you in terms of you know there's there's probably a lot of people out there that are doing something alongside their day jobs and they and and what they're doing to earn themselves some money. So they're, they're you know they've probably got a, a hobby that they that they commit to on a you know daily basis, like you were. But in their heads, they're kind of thinking, you know, I'd love to turn this into a business, but I'm not quite sure how I would do it. So I think, you know, you are the perfect example as to, you know, how people can actually turn what they're doing as their hobby into a business that's profitable as well as fulfilling as well. So, yeah, hats off to you, Zach. Yeah, exactly. You know, and 
Um, I think it's just about doing what you love, finding more time to do what you love every single day. Like that's my passion and that's my hope and dream for others is just to help them do that because it's freedom. It's like, it's what makes them happy. So, you know, be good at, be good at it, become better at it, do it part time. And then eventually if you pursue it long enough, that part time income will, you'll make more doing it part time than your full time income. And Mm -hmm. then that's when you make the transition to the switch. Mm hmm. Brilliant. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to dive into the time that you invested into because this is a big thing that you know a lot of startups will need to be aware of. How much time are they, are they looking at to invest into their business? So, can you tell us how much time you was investing into uh, into building your your business here, Zach? Yeah. Well, for my dance business, like um, I, I remember talking to um, like an amazing, amazing choreographer, and he was like. You know, it took me 13 years to get here. Like, he's got millions of views on YouTube, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Um, So it doesn't come overnight. I mean, the more people I meet, like, I hear the same story. It's like a bodybuilder. Like, okay, how do you get an amazing physique like that? You know, it took me 20 years. Like, everybody, like, wants immediate, like, gratification and success and results. But it does take tons of hard work, like, you know, training and practicing, doing stuff that you don't even feel like it you know, day in, day out on a consistent, persistent basis. But yeah, for me, it's just taking time to figure out what to say in the emails, making a system that's duplicatable for me or other people to do for me. Yeah, just figuring out my prices, what to charge. Yeah, it probably took me about eight to 10 years. Wow. To do it on this level where I'm flying, flying everywhere for free, making a really nice income just mm-hmm. from dance teaching dance 20 hours a week any um, yeah. any examples there zach you don't have to be an exact figure but could you tell us like roughly how much you've, you've been lucky enough to make let's say that now um usually my i do two hours a class two age groups so four hours per studio i usually teach at three to four studios per weekend 10 students minimum right and i usually take about 90%. And then I give studios 10% because I want to cover their electricity and everything. And I'm coming there to help their students. So yeah, like minimum on a week, like, okay, when I first started out, I made 50 bucks one summer and I, was, I thought I was doing good. Like, you know, I'm making money, doing what I love. And then I was like, that studio was tricking me. They're, you know, whatever. And then I came to a point where I was making $3,000 in three hours i'm like this world is crazy that is, that's incredible that's that's incredible mine and brad's face right now literally our jaws <laughs> just hit the floor i mean we don't you know we don't tend to really focus on the the money side of things and the revenue but, no, but i think that story just, is like perfect is, for this i just thought it's got to go in there we need to give these people an idea of what is what the potential is out there mm-hmm. through this kind of business which actually leads quite nicely on to our next question that we're about to ask you, Zach. You know, a lot of people will struggle within the starting stages of funding their their passion based business. You know, so how will you manage to manage to afford to travel to all of these places to be able to teach at the beginning? Obviously, now you're comfortable enough to be able to kind of do it whenever you like. But at the starting stages, was it a struggle? How did what things were you having to come up with to be able to to fund the flights and the hotels and the you know the travel? Yeah, well, in the beginning, um, I, I gotta say I'm I'm truly blessed and grateful to have such an amazing family and that's just so supportive of me. Um, so I couldn't have done it without them. Um, but yeah, I didn't have any college loans or debts coming out of college, you know. So um, I was pretty much free and good to go. Um, but you know, as far as like actually like making this into a full time thing and and making enough money to travel and support myself, um, yeah, I mean it just took time. Um, it took like when I when I travel and teach dance classes, like the studio usually pays for everything. I mean, so it's like like I said, it's usually ninety percent to me, it's ten percent to them. It's like it's like a mutual exchange. Right, because yeah. they want their students to get better, so they put me up in the hotels. You know, feed me, um, transportation, everything is covered. Fights usually, sometimes not. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, in, in travel and accommodation, you know, I figured out a way, I mean, to stay at five-star hotels for free, to eat at five-star restaurants for free um, through Instagram. So I'm leveraging my Instagram power and adding value at the same time, like helping these hotels and these companies, um, teaching them about branding and marketing, bringing more traffic and customers in the door. And in exchange, I get free accommodation and, and free food. So uh, I'm going to try that, definitely. I mean, so do, how do you do this? So do you do this by like posting an image of you eating dinner and tagging the, the hotel in there? Or how do you, how do you really get the message out there to people then? Yeah, I mean, I'm actually going to write a book on this, um, just like a short, like, ebook or whatever. Awesome. Um, but what the what I do is, like, I mean, just think about what you have to offer and try to add as much value as you can to them. Um, try to figure out, like, a, you know, a, an exchange, right? Whether you're a photographer, mm. take some pictures. Whether you're a pro marketer, like, help them with some, with, I don't know, like, capture pages or something or... Mm-hmm. Do like if you're a, blog, you're a blogger, write an editorial blog post about your hotel. Right, the list goes on and on. But think about what you're good at and what they're not so good at, and yeah, just reach out and try to help them. But that's again, the power of a of a cold email, right? And Definitely. subject lines and everything like that. And that's <laughs> what I do in my other businesses. We teach people, we bring people leads, and then we teach them how to reach out and talk to those leads. Brilliant. Perfect. So would you say like the, the marketing has really helped you in this? Would you, is it something that you'd recommend maybe to people out there that want to build a business out of dancing and, or maybe any other passion, would you, would you recommend the whole sort of marketing, learning about the sort of sales to get the confidence of what you need to be doing to actually get yourself out there? Yeah, absolutely. You got to invest in yourself and also invest in other people, right? You got to take classes, read books, Right. If you're not reading, you're not growing. Yeah, and talk to mentors. It's trial and error. It's all of that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you just mentioning the fact that you need to speak to to mentors. You know, is that something that you 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 did? Did you have a mentor at the time? Yeah, I've had um, many, a lot of mentors throughout my life. Would you Would you consider it an essential tool as a startup? Yeah, absolutely. Like you need mentors to, because mentors, the reason you have a mentor is because you shave time off your learning curve. Like they, they basically tell you what to do. They know what works and what doesn't. You listen to them and you do what they did and you'll be successful. Mm-hmm. That's all I, that's all I've done pretty much. And then also make tons of mistakes on my own. But honestly, I believe the more mistakes that you make and you actually learn from them, you'll grow super fast. Yeah. No, definitely. I know Zach that um, our friend he's he sent us a couple of questions that he would like answered. Um, now, one of them is an interesting one, actually. I'd, I'd be quite intrigued to find out this. Um, so, what he's asking is how um, how you balance out your training with the whole actually doing business. So, can you tell us like how you split your time between finding time for yourself to to like train? Um, but also fitting that in with the whole traveling and actually teaching and things like that. He does it on the plane. Good question. Good question. Um, cause my, my travel schedule is so crazy. I'm always on the go. It's simply setting aside a little bit of time each and every day to train. Right. I'm not like when I'm traveling and teaching, like in other countries, like I want to go out and explore and meet people and connect with people. Like I don't want to spend like, four hours a day in the studio, right? So Mm -hmm. you have to, it goes in phases, right? You have a phase where you train super hard and you get ready for something like a competition or a show, right? And then you, you have a maintenance phase, right? So like when I'm into my maintenance phase and I'm traveling a lot, I, I usually set aside like 40 minutes to an hour to train, you know, with these different crews and these different people from these different countries. Um, it's the small little things that I, that, people need to do but they don't do you know it's like reading 10 pages of a book a day if you read 10 pages you can finish that book in 30 days you know 12 books in that year that could change your mind change your life Mm -hmm. right people don't have enough time to exercise they're like okay uh yeah but just try like running like 
20 minutes a day. You know, you're going to lose weight, feel better, and look better. But I guess it's like being consistent and persistent with the training while I'm on like a crazy travel, you know, tra- traveling. Right? Well, whilst you're looking at waterfalls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Zach, you have, you know, you've absolutely smashed the first round of questions. There's so much um, value that you provided within the answers that you've given. And we know that our listeners, including our good friend that's uh, that's listening right now, um, we know that he's going to absolutely love those answers. So thank you very much. But what we're going to do now is we are going to just quickly jump into the five question rocket round. So basically what the rocket round is for any of our new listeners that aren't quite sure. The five question rocket round is where we ask our guests five quick questions so they have to think on their feet. The questions will be related to their entrepreneurial interests. So Brad, have you got the first question for Zach? You ready, Zach? Yep, I'm ready. So who is your favorite entrepreneurial idol? I I mean, I have a lot. Um, I really like this guy named Jeff Olson. He's uh, a.k.a. the millionaire maker. He's the CEO of Marion International. It's like a direct sales company, skincare, mm-hmm. anti-aging. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I followed him um, for, you know, for a couple years now. He's just doing a really, a lot of amazing things. His book, The Slight Edge, changed my life. So, you know, I definitely prefer books. Um, and I think that book could change your life. Um, it's just teaching you how to break down like small, simple actions and creating massive success, like pretty much just being consistent and persistent mm-hmm. day in, day out. So, yeah, to me, he's, he's an idol, definitely. Brilliant. OK, so next question. You know, you mentioned earlier about how, you know, reading books, you know, is, is key to a startup. We're interested to find out what is your favorite entrepreneurial book? Uh, I mean, look, I got the classics, you know, like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Think and Grow Rich. But I mean, honestly, my favorite is um, called The Go-Giver. All right, okay, pretty. And it's just all about giving. It's all about thinking about how you can serve people, um, add value to them, and love them every single moment of the day, like not expect- expecting anything in return. So, yeah, The Go-Giver really taught me just, yeah, just give and give freely. Perfect. And you, yeah, you've definitely proven that giving definitely helps in terms of in terms of getting business. So next question, Zach, what is your favorite country that you have traveled to? Um, oh, this is probably yeah. one of your toughest questions, I reckon. Uh, yeah, this is a hard one. Uh, but and how many countries have you been to, by the way? I, I, I can't even count. I'll have to <laughs> write them down. Um, but it's a crazy number. I know for sure. Before I'm 60, uh, it's going to be over like 100, hopefully Jeez. sooner than that. But Jeez. crazy. Yeah, but uh, favorite country probably Spain, just because the the country is the the culture is is very cool. Like I love how people are so relaxed, so chill, laid back. I love how they take the afternoon siestas in the middle of the day. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they come home, eat lunch, spend time with their family, you know, relax, take a nap, <laughs> and then they go back to work. And then, you know, stores close at like nine o'clock. So, I mean, it's a little bit different style of life, but I like it how they just make the focus about people because to me, life is all about people and spending time with family and, you know, family matters most. So I, I, I love Spain. No, yeah, totally agree. We're uh, we're just across the water from Spain and it's a, it's a, it's a top holiday yeah, destination here. Isn't we? Huh? Going there for New Year's. We are going there for New Year's, yeah. We're heading over to Barcelona. So Nothing if you want to join us, Zach, feel free. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so next question. Obviously, Zach, your your schedule is, you know, through the roof. But how do you make time to, to um, you know, what is your morning ritual that you go through every day to set you up for, for the day ahead? Yeah, um, for me... Um... I'm spiritual too, so what, what I like to do when I first wake up is is pray, so um, do meditation and just simply quiet myself and have a moment of silence. And then after that, I go through um, personal development, audios, read 10 pages of a book, and then I go for a run um, or I work out. So 
So that's what I usually do every single day, just to start my day um, on a positive note and to feel fresh. And yeah, usually midday I go for another run or I, um, you know, I, I dance. Dance, dance, and more dance. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the last question of the Rocket Round, what is your favorite inspiring quote? Good question. Mm. Good question. It's just, just like Nike. It's honestly just do it. <laughs> do, do whatever you've dreamed of doing and never give up until you do it. I love that. That's brilliant. That's such a simple quote as well, isn't it? Yeah, because so many people are afraid, are afraid of doing it. So many people are afraid of looking bad, right? Just do it, you know, and don't care what people think. Mm-hmm. You know, like in dance, like so many people are afraid of looking bad, right? If you want to freestyle, freestyle is listening to music and reacting to it. You know, how I feel the music is different than how you guys feel it. But it's me and it's doing me. So just be me and just do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, could not agree more, my friend. Could not agree more. Brilliant. I think thinking on your feet is definitely something that you're uh, also very skilled at, as well as dancing on your feet. <laughs> you, you're you know dying what, to get that. Like, <laughs> I've been dying, dying to say that. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so what we're going to do now, then, everybody, we are going to jump straight into the question round number two. So basically, the question rounds. Oh, sorry, the questions for round number two is where we ask the guest about the tools and techniques that they are currently using on a day-to-day basis that assists them in achieving the successes that they've had within their business. Brad, I'm going to pass the mic over to you with our first question. Uh, So Zach, yes, first question uh, that we'd like to get out of this. So going into your field where you are selling yourself as your service, a lot of startups never quite know exactly how much they should be charging or even so feel actually confident in what they're charging. So could you tell us how you know you got round how you got round this, how you sort of mapped out, okay, this is what I'm gonna charge, and whether they turn it down or you know, I'm not gonna start bartering with them and get it down. I'm gonna this is gonna be my my fees and that's that. Could you talk us through, you know, what, what it took in terms of that? Yeah, so like I said before, um like when I first started reaching out to people, I threw out crazy numbers. Why? Because I wanted to learn like what I could charge. And at that time I couldn't charge much because I wasn't much. So I'd charge I'd say like, okay, um seven hundred dollars for one hour. Right? And they're like, You're crazy. <laughs> Everybody turned me down. <laughs> and then I was like, Okay, like maybe yeah. like two fifty or you know, whatever. So people were turning me down. And the reason why is because I didn't have a solid brand. I didn't have I didn't have didn't accomplish anything, right? I didn't have anything under my belt. I didn't have a website, I didn't have, you know, awesome videos. I didn't have, you know, an Instagram. Yeah, I mean, this guy's like a nobody. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, it took me a while, right? So I had to go out and audition and um sign with talent agencies, work with artists, um, invest in my brand, building my brand, getting a good website. Right. And so once mm-hmm. I had an, a solid brand and, you know, I could charge more. And honestly, it depends on the market. It depends on the country. It depends on the city. It depends. Yeah. It depends on a lot of things. You know, the studio, how many students does the studio have? It, it depends like anywhere from like $15 to uh, st- per student to 25 to up to $40 per student. I mean, it just, it just depends. It just depends. Have to feel it out. But, yeah. but did you, did you get to that point where you, you know, you come up with your numbers and you thought, right, this is what I'm going to value myself at now. And that's that Did you do that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm like, okay, like this is what I charge. Like I understand where you're coming from, but you know, I, I've worked really hard to get here. Um, so if it doesn't work out, it's it's all good. And that's the thing is like, guys, when people turn you down and like, you know, say no to you, like, I mean, still find a creative way to stay in touch. It's like the fortune is in that and also in the follow-up, right? So 
that's really, really key is to never burn bridges, but it's also to remember the fortune is in the follow-up. So like when you're reaching out to these people and then you get busy and you forget about them and these people respond to you and say, yeah, I'm interested, right? You need to be like, you know, writing all of these names and these emails down and following up with them, right? A lot of mm-hmm. people never follow up. I'm just not letting them go cold. Yeah, they ne- people don't follow up, so then, yeah, they're left with nothing. And there could be, I suppose, a regular occurrence of work that comes out of that. If you build a good relationship with them and, you know, it all goes successful, they might invite you back next time, I suppose, Bon. Yeah, you want to have repeat visits. You want to be able to have them use them as a good testimonial. You want them to refer you to others because they know other dancers and dance studios. So, yeah, it's, yeah, life is about a relationship. So, I mean, just figure out ways to make a ton of friends and find a creative way to stay in touch and... Maybe they'll help you, maybe they won't, but they might so know someone that can. No, could not 100%. agree more. Perfect. Okay, so next question. Can you tell us what strategies you were using at the time to get your clients in the early stages? You know, was you, you know, I know you said you obviously done a lot of cold, cold emailing, but did you come get around to using PR agencies, you know, online, offline marketing, advertising, online ads, you know, what kind of tool, what kind of techniques were you using? I kept it simple. I just used Google and Facebook. Only two things I used. Free. Wow. So you spent no money in the beginning stages in terms of getting your name out there and getting to where you are now. Free tools and free dance classes. <laughs> that's perfect. That's spot on. I mean, that's perfect, isn't it? We rarely get that answer back. So you know, this is an ideal way. Like people need to listen and and learn from this. That there is other ways to getting yourself out. That don't you just don't have to spend a fortune yeah. to be able to you know. You'd be wasting money yeah, on things exactly. that you don't need to do. Exactly. Okay, brilliant. So you know, talking of talking sort of you know tools and resources that you were using for back then what tools and resources are you using at the minute for you and your business so that's offline or online yeah honestly it's um it's a tool that me and my um co-founder created sean um it's um email scraper or it's a it's like a new era of lead generation so that's what i use to connect with over twenty six thousand dance studios in about five hours so it saved me Crazy amount of wow. time. Crazy. Five five hours. Could you just give us a, a, a sort of lowdown on how that works then? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's like, you know, we only need two things to get started, like a keyword to search and a place to look, right? So examples would be like dance studios and marketing agencies, modeling agencies, whatever. Whatever word you can use in a Google search and then where to look. And then we, you know, you give a, we give you a map of the U.S. and then, Basically, our clients draw a rectangle over the region they're interested in. And honestly, I don't know how it works. It works. The guys that created it are way <laughs> smarter than me. Geniuses. And yeah, it just works. <laughs> That's crazy. So what, where can people find that? Like, how find you? You know, what do they need to go to to, to find that? Because I'm sure there's probably going to be a lot of people that will, will want to know about that. Including me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the website is e one onecom E1R1. Yeah, and that stands for each one reach one. Brilliant. Sure. Okay, Love no worries. That. We shall put that in the show notes for uh, for all of our listeners to head on over to. Cool. So following from that, Zach, we've obviously got a feel for, you know, which networks you're using, mainly Instagram. That's how obviously we know you being in the same community. Um, so can you relate to that and maybe give us an idea of, you know, is there any other social media platforms that work for you? But if it's just Instagram, just give us an idea how effective it's been for you you know have you pulled any clients in from it and how it you know just talk us through it yeah um i mean i still use facebook i still use google i mean i use instagram a lot um mainly instagram instagram is like one of the most engaging platforms out there so it's cool like what i usually do is i search like dance studios or dancers or whatever um you know in the hashtags and then all these people pop up i like a few of their pictures i leave a comment and i say hey how's it going cool page love to connect you know and i mean it, honestly i look at the page and see if i do find something interesting i leave a comment and i mean i've been able to get tons of leads from just doing that so whatever you're in in like you can that's a good way to get leads 
Um, and yeah, I mean, Instagram has helped me get a lot of sponsorships. So I get tons of clothing for free. I get, you know, nutrition bars, shoes, and sunglasses. Wow. Yeah. I is, mean, that, is this from having a big following? Right? So the more influence that you have, the more fans that you have, like the more power that you have. And it's allowed me to connect with some really amazing people. And yeah, I mean, because of Instagram, I, I travel for free. That's amazing. I'm I'm really jealous. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm thinking. I need to. I need to just be with you right now. I need to learn everything that you're doing. I need to learn how to dance. I need to improve on yeah, my two man, step for a start. Do it. Dance battle. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine Greg doing the crazy yeah. legs. <laughs> I'm telling you, next time that we uh, we manage to hook up with you, we're going out. We're going on, we're going out on a night out, and I'm gonna you absolutely, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna battle you. <laughs> cool, I'm down. I'm down. I just called you out on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about that? Oh, Zach? Shoot. oh shoot! <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, okay, okay. Brilliant. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap things up with the last question now. And, you know, some would say this is the most essential question that we ask on the show. You know, other than the many bits of advice that you've given throughout this episode, you know, what is the one tool or sorry, what is the one technique that you would recommend for anybody that's, you know, passionate about what you're doing? They're doing it on a daily basis. What should they be doing right now to be able to, you know, get themselves out there? What, what can they do this very second? The biggest piece of advice I can give them is to train and trade hard. Train like crazy and never give up. Like, honestly, right now you should be dancing, um, you know, putting in as many hours as you can, working on yourself, developing yourself, um, connecting with other dancers, other artists, networking, right? So the more people, like the better dancer you become and the more people you know, you're going to be more successful. Um, Honestly, that's the biggest piece of advice I can give you. It's just become the best you can be and know as many people as possible. Yeah, I mean, your life will be good. Zach, you have owned this show 100%. You know, you've absolutely killed it, brother, just as we knew when we spoke to you on Skype a couple of weeks ago. We had to get you on the show. We knew that, you know, people needed to hear this kind of thing. This is 2016. We're in a generation now where you can create a business out of anything. Um, and you are proving that. So thanks for coming on the show, brother. You've been awesome. And uh, we shall... Oh, Greg. Actually, we can cut that off. <laughs> Greg's going <laughs> to... I'm sitting here. I'm going, Brad, 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 wait, 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 wait. One sec, one sec. We still need to ask some questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, Greg... You can finish that up. Okay, so Zach, you know, our listeners, they're obviously going to be dying to find out how they can get in contact with you. Can you tell any of our listeners right now what your channels are and where they can find you and how they can get in contact with you? Definitely. You guys can find me on Instagram at the Travelers List with two L's. Um, you can connect with, connect with me on assistagram.co which is our, our Instagram management site. So we pretty much grow Instagram accounts and make you more popular um, so that you can travel the world or do whatever you, you want to do. Um, and then also e1r1.com. Yeah, that's the best way. Perfect. We will put those in the show notes, brother. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So thanks for coming on the show, Zach. It's been, it's been, it's been I've, pleasure, you know, I've just sat here throughout the whole show and uh, yeah, just been in complete awe of everything you've said. I've ta- even I, you know, we've both taken away massive tips that we can use to implement on Sage One Startup. So that's how we know that our listeners are going to absolutely, you know, kill it with the advice that you've given them. So thank you from us. And I'm sure I'm going to say a thank you from our listeners as well. Yeah, honestly, guys, thank you so much for having me. Um, I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to battle you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Honestly, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you for coming cheers, on the bro. show, Zach. All right, cheers. Bye. So then, guys, what an amazing episode it has been. We hope you've taken away some super, super tips and advice from today's episode and from our special guests. And don't forget, you can replay this show or check out any of the show notes by visiting our website at www.stage1startup.com forward slash podcast. 
But before we leave you, we just like to put the icing on the cake. We always like to finish the show with our current and most special announcement, the S1S contest. Anybody can enter. All you need to do is follow the rules of the game, which Brad is about to tell you. But first, here's what to expect to win from the contest. You will win one year's free subscription to Live Plan, five free entrepreneurial books chosen by myself and Brad. You will also win a personalized S1S t-shirt with the winner's name on it. Could it be any better? Now, Brad, if you could just tell our listeners what they have to do to be in with a chance to win. Always a pleasure, Greg. So, guys, all you need to do to enter the contest and have your chance of winning these amazing startup gifts are number one, subscribe to the podcast. Number two, leave a tasty review for us. And number three, give us a big, fat five-star rating. Once you've done that, take a super selfie of you holding a note that says, done, hashtag, give me S1S. You can post this on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, but make sure you tag us in the picture, as well as putting the hashtag into the description, as we will be doing the search for entries by using the hashtag. Visit our website on the stage1startup.com forward slash podcast page to see the end of contest date and when we will be revealing the winner. We'll also be giving our winner a shout out on the podcast to congratulate them. So then guys, it is literally that simple. You've got to be in the game to win the game. Thanks so much for listening to today's show. We really do appreciate everybody who has tuned in to take tips and advice from today's guests. We will continue to make it our priority to provide you with the best of the best so that you can go from launching your business from stage one to success. 